Do another one. Let's see you do another one. Okay, you explain what you're doing. So this is a tie. You put it around rebar like this. And you take this to a loop and the twist them. You put it through these, these two loops like this. And pull up when you're, while you're twisting. But sometimes it comes out. So pull up really hard and then start twisting. And when it's like this, stop and push it down. Bye. Plumbers got their underground stuff wrapped up this week. Looks really good. He's had, uh, I think he said five pounds of air on here for like a week and it hasn't dropped a bit. So we can be real confident there's no leaks. They added this uh, backflow preventer here for us. Um, I thought it was a great idea. If, uh, if the septic tank ever, for whatever reason, ever fills up and the alarm doesn't go off, this will stop all the, the septic from coming up through our floor drain and through our other stuff. It's a great idea. So I'm going to finish a couple little things off here today. I'm going to run the power and the water out to that yard hydrant way over out in the trees. I'm going to run that over. Power to the panel, hydrant to the water supply there. And then I'll start backfilling this. So we can start doing our insulation and our rebar and get our basement floor done here. We gotta get that done before it starts getting cold, so better get on it. Sunday, back at the house. It's uh, raining pretty good today. And I don't see any leaks. So I think the roofers did a good job. There's no wet spots inside here. But it's been the worst drought since the late 80s around here. Now our exterior guys want to get started and it starts raining. <laughs> oh boy. It's not the wind and the heat, it's the rain. It's always something, right? Farmers are sure not gonna be happy about this either. They wanna go and get out and harvest what little crop they're gonna have and now everything's muddy and crappy. But yeah, so kinda did a lap around the house, making sure the water is going where it should be going. And today I'm going to start Spent the day yesterday uh, backfilling all the plumber's stuff. Got that all flattened out and leveled off. Today I'm going to start putting this hydro foam down. I did a little bit yesterday, but it's, uh, it takes quite a bit to get this rock all leveled off and get it proper. So that's today's mission. Keep going on this stuff. This is the uh, our, our heating lines snap right in between these nubs here. So to make it really easy to route them through and do that properly. 
So that's today's mission. We'll get on it. So I spent the night yesterday digging this hole here. We talked about that weeping tile earlier, how it goes all the way around the house, underneath the footing, just outside the house, all the way around, out to the corner. One goes out to the corner there, and one stops at the corner over there. But they all come back here into our sump pit. So we've got this big tank here. Not real graceful got this tank here it's gonna sit in that hole and any water that builds up outside the house here has a place to go it will end up draining into here and we'll have a pump inside here that will be plumbed into there so if any groundwater starts building up outside the house there it's got a place to go it's got a weeping tile to get into and that weeping tile will drain into the sump pit the sump pump will pump it out problem solved Oh, and this one, uh, it was only like $10 more at the supplier, but this one, the way it's built, the floor pours right on top here. And then that'll actually seal out the radon gas and stuff that we had talked about earlier. It's all code, up to code and rated for this job, so it should work well. So it's the weekend again, gonna get cracking. A little update as to what's going on. Plumbing's all done, roughed in, backfilled, ready to go. Um, this here, well, start with the, the bottom, I guess. We have to put a vapor barrier between the radon rock and our insulation board. And this is our insulation board. It's called a hydrofoam. It's a product that new Dura sells. It looks pretty awesome, kind of crazy once it's all in here. But our in-floor heating lines snap right in between these nubs here. They fit right in there. So that's the mission for the weekend here. I'm gonna finish that off, finish the vapor barrier off. <clears throat> We've also got our exterior guys starting now. We were back and forth and back and forth on how, on how to actually do the stucco over ICF. So you can directly apply it, but I, if you look at the foam here, here's what the guy showed me, the stucco guy who I was talking to. If you take this, you know, you, you could poke right in there. So if we do stucco directly over the foam, we've got young kids. <laughs> I, I wasn't crazy about that. Cause you know, you're, you're only gonna get a couple of layers of acrylic stucco over that foam. So what we decided to do was basically do it like traditional cement stucco, full tar paper, full lath, and Tom, the guy who we got to do it, is screwing the ever-living crap out of it. Every eight inches with, uh, those are called wafer screws, we call them. They're usually meant for um, building with steel studs, but he's doing an awesome job. And that's how we're gonna do it. So we got that fully waterproof tar paper with the full lath screwed into every web every eight inches and he's gonna do that everywhere so i had to go yesterday it's been raining lots here lately like it's muddy 
you can see my boots here but <clears throat> so he didn't come in he didn't come today it's it's too muddy but we had to cut this membrane down for him we weren't sure how to do this when we uh we needed it to be this high in behind our our stairs here we needed the membrane fully up there but this this over here we didn't need it to be up this high so rather than have this big what would this be about a half inch gap for him to try and feather out somehow we just cut it right off left the original membrane there he'll take his paper all the way down lath it all the way down and we're going to be you know there'll be some lux panels some stucco some brick and then just some parging because we're going to have like shrubs and plants here this will be our concrete step the full paper and lath on this wall same around here but he doesn't have to screw it the way he does on the the wood wall like he does on the icf so <clears throat> it won't be quite so much money for him to do that for us but yeah so that's kind of where we're at here my weekend is going to be playing with the hydro foam and if I get to it, I'm going to start on the uh, hydronic lines there, the, uh, the in-floor heating lines. I got to show you these drawings later that uh, the guys we... I'm going to scrape my boots off here. I'm going to show you these drawings that Keen, the, uh, the guy who designed our uh, HVAC system, did for us. It's, it's awesome. He made it kind of idiot-proof for me, which is good. This weekend we got lots of our heating lines and about three quarters of our rebar done there's a little part over here we couldn't do gotta wait for the plumbers to get some stuff done but that'll get done this week but the way this all works here this hydro foam see how these lines they just pop right in between these nubs here all we have to do is walk it along and just literally step it in The way we did our heating lines they're all zoned off so that it does the outside first and then it wraps around wraps around wraps around and then turns back and goes back this way and what that does it kind of spreads out because the obviously the water closest to the boiler is going to be the hottest before it loses its heat to the concrete so you send all that hot hot water to the outside of your pad first and just have it loop back to the middle and that spreads out the heat more evenly lots of guys what i've seen them do is they'll come in and they'll just loop back and forth back and forth until they get to the end and then come back and then you have this side's pretty hot and that side's kind of cool 
and it just doesn't heat as evenly. So we did it that way. Um, our rebar here is all on 16 inch centers. And yeah, tied at every joint. And we just got 20 foot, 20 foot bars and just three, three worked out this way and with three worked out that way with plenty of overlap. So, yeah. That's that. I'm gonna start digging over here. We've got to dig under the footing here again. Our uh, drain pit for our garage is gonna come through right there, tie into our main and go out to the septic tank there. So if we're ever washing cars or wash the floor off in the garage, it all just runs down the pit and it's gone. Whoops. And that's that. Here's those drawings I was talking about earlier, how you just laid it out for me. So you get your, your hot water going out. You follow this guy here. Comes around, around, then it loops back, over, all the way back to the boiler. And he's got every zone done that way. It goes all the way around the outside first, works its way to the middle, and then back, all the way back to the boiler. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six zones for the basement. And what did it end up? One, two, three, four, five zones for the garage. And he also laid out all my ductwork here for me. We're gonna do all the work, but you know, Keen did all the thinking. <laughs> so the green ones are eight inch, the yellow are five inch, and he's even got the main duct all figured out here. So basically, I just need to put it all together. It's awesome. Made it made it super super easy for me. Okay, here's the hole under the footing. Can you see the daylight? Yeah. Oh man, it sucks getting under those things. I had I had this shovel buried to here. It's tough going. Not as bad as the other end though. I'll take you over there and show you. Holy smokes. Looks like I dug a grave in the garage. <laughs> well, my brother did most of it actually. I just finished it off. That was nice of him. It's right over here. There's a really cool spider in the corner too. I didn't want to bug him. I'll show you him too. Yeah, that's down there. Let's see if we can get a shot of this cool spider here. Where is he? There he is in the corner. I think he's eating a cricket. <laughs> we'll just leave him right there. All right, it's Labor Day weekend. Back at the house. Um, starting to get this garage floor all prepped here. So we put this drain pit in so the floor can't be level or the pit is useless, right? So everything needs to slope this way. So I didn't tell the guys that when they backfilled this all. So they put it all in level and this clay packs ridiculously hard. It's been kind of tough going here. But I've got it strung out here. This is gonna be basically the bottom of the pad. So I need two, two and a half inches of foam below that string everywhere. And it's basically gonna start there. And I've got four inches of slope from that wall to here. So this is gonna be a little bit, you know, kind of a little bit steep here. But we need that grade to get everything to drain properly. So I've been working on this, you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. You know, strung it out across the angles. I got to dig this one out. This will be today's mission here. I'm going to string it across that corner, figure out what needs to come out of here and where it's low. And then this will all work really well. Tom has been killing it this week. He's got uh, lots of this 
paper and wire done for us. It looks great. So you can kind of see what the house is going to be here. Um, there's this lath there uh, behind all our brick where it's just paper. That's going to be our Lux panel up there. And around the corner here, it's the same thing here. So the, the, the wire there is going to be stucco. The lath is going to be brick. And the paper is going to be Lux panel here. So he's doing an awesome job. He, uh, he tuck tapes the blue skin, then he papers it, then he tapes it again, and then he silicones it. So he's doing an awesome job. These are the stucco stops they're called. So the stucco runs right up to this. And this gives us a nice edge to work off of uh, to put our Lux panel in. And all around the house here, kind of the same thing. This is all going to be stucco. This was done different than the than the ICF because it's wood, obviously. This is kind of the standard way to do it. But it'd be hard to attach that wire, or more, you know, more difficult to attach that wire to the ICF than the lath. So the guys, we kind of decided to do it this way. So, yeah. So this wall is all brick and stucco. We've got a little section here of that uh, Lux panel again. And then this whole wall is basically just stucco. Yeah. That's what's going on. So I'm going to work on that garage today. I'm hoping to get the, the floor all finished there, the heating lines finished. I don't have the rebar here, so I'll have to do that this or next week. But I'm hoping to get the garage floor and the basement floor basically finished up other than rebar this weekend. See how it goes. A good day today got all this leveled off and got our vapor barrier in and got all of our hydro foam in this uh, rebar here gets bent down and it'll uh, it'll be in the floor and then there's another detail on the drawing about uh, so we'll have the same 16 inch centers with our rebar but I think I'm gonna do 15 M instead of 10 M that heavier bar it'll be like this size bar all through the floor here I figure we're driving cars, driving tractors, you know, for the few hundred dollars in, in steel it'll cost to go with the heavier bar. I think we're going to do it. But uh, these guys will bend over into the floor. Um, there'll be that 16 inch center uh, grid. And then over top of these piles, there's additional rebar. I think it goes on the 45 in a, in a few places, eight or 10 foot long bars or something on the 45s to, to help carry that weight on the pile. I have to double check that, but so there's three, four of them here. One, two, three, four, poke up, and our drain pit. So a lot less stuff to cut around than the basement. It went pretty quick. But yeah, that was today. Um, here, it's another kind of interesting thing how we did this here. We had these uh, stirrups in the, in the, uh, the garage grade beam. So that'll kind of grab onto the, the garage floor here. And these bars here will tie on to the, to the rebar grid. So yeah, tomorrow we're gonna get onto the, uh, the heating lines. I don't have the rebar for the garage yet, but we'll get it next week. But we'll get these heating lines done and keep rolling.
Okay, it's the weekend again. I worked on this metal this week. This uh, cladding for the garage doors here. It's kind of cool. The guys, uh, you, you give them the measurements, they put it in their machine, they cut it, they bend it, and make it all fit really nicely for us. So the guy at the store was nice enough to make me these little templates on how to actually do this and make it finish nicely. Like the corners look pretty good for a rookie, you know. But the top one you do first, and that fits on there like this. This would be that edge. So that folds down and the edge carries through. And then the other one, you have to fold over the back there and that gives it a nice finish on the front. And that slides up there. So this is obviously a different profile than ours, but you get the idea, right? So that was nice of him to show me how to do that. I would have probably wrecked a couple before I figured it out and he got it right. So I got this all laid out yesterday. Dad and I did this. This will be the garage. So our, our uh, heating lines are in, the hydro foam, you know, same as the basement. You just pop it right in there, step it in. And then we put 15 M rebar in the garage here because we're going to be driving vehicles and stuff in there. Uh, our drain pit, everything slopes down to the pit. The uh, plumbing inspector came this week and gave us the thumbs up on everything. So that's, that's great. Tom finished this week too. Our uh, paper and lath guy, he did an awesome job. Looks, looks great. And we got that uh, foam out of the sun now finally, which is good. You know, this, in the, it deteriorates in the sun. It starts getting this, uh, this dust on the outside of it. Like you can see here. You know, it, it, it doesn't like being in the sun. But that's all, it's all covered up now. So it looks really, really good. We're never gonna have any trouble with the stucco falling off. And this lath, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it too. When you, when you, feel, uh, when you feel it, you want it to be rough going up and smooth going down and what that does if you look in here you can see how those little the little uh the little pockets go down so then you know gravity will hold that stucco in there right if you put them the other way it might want to fall out so it's got to be like feel like a cheese grater going up and smooth going down yeah, and Tom did a great, great job for us. It's, this was a ton of work. But yeah, so today I'm gonna tie all the rebar here. Got a few more, uh, gotta do a couple little cuts here. Fill in these spots. Gotta, gotta uh, do some foam over top of that drain pipe or that vent pipe there. We don't want that in the concrete. Gotta blow the dirt off the footings here. Vacuum the dirt out of the, uh, the piles. So, yeah, better get to work. So, I've got this floor pretty much ready to go. I rechecked those details about uh, the rebar over the piles in the, in the uh, drain pit. So, they, want, uh, they wanted an X over top of the pile and the diamond around the drain pit. On our drawing, it was two drain pits. There was gonna be like one here and one about there somewhere. But we decided, you know, why? So we just stuck the one in. We got the diamonds around that guy. Got the little X over top of the piles. I guess that just helps to spread the load out. You know, if this floor ever decides to drop for any reason, it'll It'll be supported on that pile and that rebar should kind of carry that weight or help carry that weight all the way across there. So this is where our in-floor heating manifold is going to be. Right up in this corner, we've got these nice little plastic things to bring them up and the concrete will finish pretty much right to the top of that, uh, that white thing there. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get that to sit down nicely there. Those pipes, they have a lot of tension on them. They want to, they want to pull away and they want to kind of do what they, what they want to do, so I had to sort of rig a bunch of stuff up with rebar there. I gotta go do the same thing in the basement, but the basement isn't against a wall, so it's gonna be a little tougher yet to do. 
but I'm gonna go tackle that next and then hopefully we'll pour these next week it's all ready to go though looks good <laughs> <laughs> 